Right, welcome to our leader learning. Uh, this evening we have Amanda Joy Harrison from the UK uh, letting us know. Amanda has actually been with us for since 2016, is it? It's a couple of years, I think, now, oh, yeah. Yes, one of our mm -hmm. very early leaders. And um, she's, as I say, in the UK, in Harrogate, and um, has had an amazing story. Um, and I, you know, I'm quite inspired by what, where you've come from and where you are now in terms of, you know, you're now running your own retreats, which is amazing. <laughs> And I know that you've got some really good inspiring information for us and to um, help other leaders, you know, to um, get their classes up and running and perhaps, um, you know, uh, you'd like to share with us um, some of the things that you've done. But I, I suppose firstly, um, I'd just like to ask what, what is your background and um, what field do you currently work in? So um, I started off as a nurse um, I mostly worked with um, people who were paralysed from the neck down and who had um, chronic pain. Um, and paralysis and pain, people are usually surprised when they go together, um, but um, they call it neurological pain, or they did call it neurological pain. And I used to sort of work with a lot of people who had like phantom limb syndrome and all that kind of stuff. So lots of sort of neurological sensation feelings. Um, those are kind of my, my main client base. And then went on to work in rehabilitation. Um, I worked with people with mental health um, challenges um, and then um, left that um, career and had a career change and went into teaching. Um, <clears throat> where I um, had, I was very blessed, and I've been able to travel the world a little bit, and um, and finally I ended up in Saudi Arabia, where I was um, educating uh, young women, um, and I was a part of a team of fantastic women who opened up um, female colleges, all female colleges, further education colleges. Um, uh, but now, <laughs> now I'm a, a clinical hypnotherapist. Um, I specialize in um, all things really connected with fertility and pregnancy and birthing. I, I teach hypnobirthing um, and um, I'm a massage therapist. So, um, you know, nursing kind of came back around and helped me with the massage therapy and the, and the hypnobirthing side of things. And I'm still teaching, but I'm now teaching uh, hypnobirthing mostly and, and meditation, of course, as well. So, Fantastic. And full yeah. complementary yeah. therapist. Yeah. And what was it that made you want to start teaching meditation? Well, um, during my time um, as, a, as a nurse, um, I, I had experienced a few really challenging things. And the outcome of that was... I, I had ho horrendous uh, few years of, of very uh, of my own mental health challenges, um, lots of anxiety, low mood, and you know really struggled myself. And it was really funny because um, I studied mindfulness as a part of my degree in psychology. I, I studied the, the perceived health benefits of mindfulness, um, and and uh, my, it was just a short four week study. Um, you know, asking people like what their perceived health was at the beginning and then running a meditation, mindful meditation sessions and, and then looking at the changes in, in people. That was a very simple um, bit of research. That was done quite a long time ago now. And um, the, the perceived change in their health was incredible. People felt happier. They were more confident they 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 were having they were communicating better with each other um, and I kind of knew all of this but was quite wrapped up in my own anxiety and kind of forgot that I'd had this learning experience that had shown me some incredible tools and um, was very blessed to, to have been reminded um, about the benefits of meditation and thought oh yeah I kind of know all this stuff. I know some of this stuff um, and started um, a daily practice so I would just get up in the morning and um, 
I call it my spiritual breakfast because we eat healthy foods and we brush our hair and we have a shower, we prepare ourselves physically, um, but we don't always prepare ourselves mentally or emotionally for the day. So I would just spend a few moments preparing myself with meditation in the morning. Um, and then at the end of the day, I would have a little time of reflection and um, just say thank you for my day, you know, have, have some gratitude around my day. And then um, what transformation? I became more positive. Uh, I didn't feel anxious anymore. I stopped having panic attacks. My lower moods just kind of disappeared. Um, and I just, I, I, I went through a real personal transformation. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, you know, being a qualified counsellor and a clinical hypnotherapist, I was like, I need to tell everybody about this. <laughs> everybody needs to have meditation in their lives because it really helps. It helps to, um, you know, empower people in their lives. It helps them to, to become aware of their thought processes and their feelings. It helps to impact changes in people's lives. And I thought, everybody needs to be doing this. So looked looked at um, ways to to become a teacher um, and discovered skillful mind. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where it all started a couple of years ago. <laughs> So um, for the new leaders or people just starting out on um, their, you know, setting up their group, how did you start your first class um, and um, who, who are you teaching and, um, yeah, start, start with that. So, um, so I had already got a very small client base of people who were coming to see me for massage and clinical hypnotherapy. I had just got back to the Eng to England after a long time of being out traveling the world. So I didn't really know anybody. I didn't really have very many connections. So I had a small group of clients who were interested in meditation and a small group of hypnotherapy clients who were interested in meditation. So obviously I contacted them. They were my first call. Friends and family. Um, and clients and then um, the thing that I guess worked the best for me was um, meetups which is an app that you can download onto your phone mm -hmm. and there are ready-made groups of people who have registered an interest in specific things so I basically just found all the people who were interested in meditation and went hi <laughs> I'm gonna run a meditation group would you like to join my meetups and meetups was free it didn't cost me anything to begin with it was free to kind of get going with and um, I think you have to pay after you've had it for a few months but to begin with it was free and um, it got me got me established um, I was very lucky I have um, a friend who teaches um, Tai Chi he rented me his studio space and I went from there um, so meetups um, people who I knew um, Facebook definitely comes into it now, and but the Facebook came came secondary to the meetup groups. That was really how I got going. Fantastic. And um, in terms of longevity and, and getting people to keep coming back to your classes, how have you maintained that? You know, have, do you have any particular ways or connect ways to connect with your people to keep them? Well, once people have once people have come to my um, my classes, I I always take their contact details, contact name, telephone number, and email address. I obviously get their permission to store that information, um, and once I, and, and if they give me their permission to store that information, every time I run a new class, I do a mail a mail out to everybody who's ever been to one of my classes who's given me permission to do so, mm -hmm. and I contact them and connect with them. Um, and it pretty much all my classes are always full now. Um, I, I have to turn people away more than you know. Um, lack, you know, I don't have I don't I don't have the space to get any more than sort of ten or twenty people in really. Ah, so um, ah. so um, yeah, it, I'm you know I'm two years in now. So pretty much whenever I put a class on, it gets full. Well, in terms of, like when where I started and how I how I got people to commit to the program, I did it. I tried all different ways to begin with, you know, paying weekly, coming for a session, 
um, that uh, was really challenging um, because it rains in England quite a lot. And, um, you know, you arrive at a church hall with all your yoga mats and your cushions and your candles and it's freezing cold. So you get the place nice and warm. You get your yoga mats out, your cushions out, you get your candles lit, it's all looking beautiful. And you sit there and it rains and nobody shows up. <laughs> Mm. So, you know, there are, there are some challenging times at the beginning um, where things didn't quite go how I wanted them to go. Um, what did you do? What, how did you know what? Um, it was really hard um, the first time it ever happened because there was a bit of me that was like, what am I doing wrong? And there was a bit of me that felt a bit kind of upset because nobody was there. And it was, you know, it, 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 it was quite hard to kind of process the negative feelings around that. Mm. Um, but what I realized was that it was a perfect opportunity for self-care for me. I've just mm. hired a beautiful studio, the candles are out, the cushions are here. Mm. I'm just going to have this as a, as a really beautiful meditation space for me. Mm. <laughs> and I would just meditate for myself within that time. Um, maybe take some some nice photographs of the candles. Maybe like, like write a little bit about you know what I what I'd meditated on in that session, um, and use it as a sort of time to to reach out to people. I think as well, I had to assess why people hadn't come, and maybe it was the wrong time of the week, maybe it wasn't a good area, maybe the building wasn't conducive, maybe it was um, a time of the week where lots of people were doing lots of other things. Um, but, um, you know, Wednesdays and Fridays seem to work the best um, for me. Uh, Wednesdays, like a midweek check-in Friday, just to kind of end the week mm. and begin the weekend. Mm. Wednesdays and Fridays work best. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm quite lucky now because I have a place to invite people to, so I don't have to go to a, to a place, but, um, um, definitely, um, getting people booked in, in advance and getting them to pay in advance mm -hmm. for a block of sessions mm -hmm. is, a, is, is, you know, been really valuable for me because, um, if they don't show up, well, that's okay because that's their choice and maybe something's come up um, and, you know, I, I can I can pay the rent and I can eat. <laughs> you know, mm. that's the practicality of it. Um, and so that those, those getting people to book and pay in advance is a really good idea. Um, and if people do message me and say, I'm really sorry, Amanda, something terrible's happened and I can't come, well, I, I might send them a little audio um, of a meditation that I've made as a kind of not to worry here's something to replace the session that you've missed and if people don't contact me and don't show up well that's their choice and they've paid and I've paid the rent so that's fine so uh, yeah just kind of like putting things like that in place um it was was really beneficial fantastic um did you have any questions Peter uh, no, I think that's been a really, uh, yeah, very motivational story. Um, I think you've answered a lot of the questions and I, it reinforces my own learnings when I was trying to start a group and my own feelings. And I've, I had a couple of times when nobody showed up and it is tough. And uh, I remember I invited my boss. I was an engineer. I was still working at the time. And I invited my boss and he came down and he joined in the session and he brought a friend. Uh, and then so he and his friend were the only two people that showed up. And I was very embarrassed because he was like in front of my boss. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. And it, it, it's really, um, yeah, it, it, I guess it sorts out the committed people um you know and so this is two or three you know this was probably four or five years ago and now i'm running retreats all over the world and i've got hundreds of leaders and and, and things like that so um yeah but but um it happens to the best of us so that was great to hear <laughs> that and, and so good to hear that you've persisted in this and it's come good um 
Greg, do you have any questions for, for Amanda? Uh, nothing that's come up for that. I think she's answered. Well, the, 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 she's given enough information, so I don't have any questions at this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amanda, do you have any advice for any of our new leaders? What, um, you know, perhaps it's a major learning of yours or a re retrospective or, um, so I suppose there's two questions, any, you know, any advice? Um, and then the next one is where to from here? Because I know that, you, you know, you're about to launch. <laughs> I think my advice um, is is to to recognize the value of the thing that you are offering. Um, for me, medica meditation was medication. You know, it transformed it transformed my mental health, and and I became a different, happier, more positive person. Um, I think when people really value what they're doing, um, you know, they that comes across in, in how passionate they are. And I also think that um, you need to be really disciplined with yourself about your own meditation practice. Mm -hmm. I think if you're trying to sell meditation, you need to be doing it. You need to be doing it on a daily basis. You need to have your own practice because if you're, you're breathing it and living it and passionate about it and it's helping you and it's working for you, that's just going to come across with everyone that you meet and people are going to say I, I want i want some of that and, and you're going to draw them in you're going to attract them in because you're presenting them with a positive happy joyful person that you are mm -hmm. um so i think that's important i think you know um taking it slowly and accepting that there are going to be some hurdles is is really important you know that you are going to have days when no one turns up it's quite nice to know that everybody here has that experience as well um, and and just know that that one person that you might have in front of you who who you might really be able to give them a tool or um some way of like just you know them something that can really help them um and that 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 might be the, the catalyst that brings 10 people to the group next week um so so yeah um my advice i think that's about it really meditate yourself um and um just keep keep going <laughs> um where, where am i going now um well um super exciting right at the beginning of a of a brand new project at Harewood, which is, um, Harewood is um, a really beautiful, massive estate of land where, um, you know, there's lots of conservation and um, lots of different animals and woodland. And it's, it's, it's quite famous in, in, in the UK, it's a beautiful part of the world. And um, I'm in the process of opening treatment rooms there where I'll be offering all the services that I offer. But we have this fabulous little it's called the garden lodge and it's basically it's a little wooden little uh, stone cottage in the middle of a field with trees all around it <laughs> and that's where we're going to be running our meditation uh, every week um we're going to be running them every friday at half past six to half past seven um it's it's a great place to kind of call into it really it's a retreat place um, and um, I'll be running notions every Friday till half past seven. Then on the fourth week every month, we're going to have a guest speaker. So um, we'll have um, different people coming to talk about different meditation styles, different meditation tools, different meditation techniques and practices. Our first one is um, a gong bath. So we're going to be having um, some sound healing sessions for our first one. We've got some sound journeys. We've got some TRE. I don't know if you do TRE. Um, different, um, different, different practices of, of meditation uh, as well. Um, oh, because, um, and I've done it that way. The reason why is because Friday nights are quite sacred. And, um, you know, it's quite nice to do Friday night, half past six, half past seven for everyone else. But I might want one off for myself. Might want to, uh, might want to let my hair down on a Friday night. And I don't want to become, uh, you know, I don't want to give up all my Fridays. So this way, doing three, three teaching three and having the fourth one off, I can either just come along and enjoy it myself 
<laughs> or I can, uh, you know, I can uh, go out for dinner <laughs> and do my own thing. I think it's really important to have that balance as well. That's something I've really been learning about. So, yeah, um, we've just done our first spring retreat, which was yoga and meditation based. We've got a summer retreat coming up. We've got an autumn retreat and a winter retreat, our seasonal retreats that are uh, on the go. We are having some, some ladies day retreats coming up. And next year, very excited about this. We're hoping that um, we're going to host, well, we're going to, it's going to happen. We're going to host a Skillful Mind um, retreat as well. We are super excited about the idea of you guys coming over to see us and stay with us and, and run a retreat here in the UK. Mm, exciting mm, really is amazing absolutely amazing <laughs> um, yeah yeah Magic. wow <laughs> wow you better give me some dates amanda <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely we'll put some dates in the diary i think we've already got a few in the diary yeah, I think we've got them, yeah. Are we? yeah yeah exciting. dates are in the diary it's happening we're very excited that's where I'm at. It's amazing to think that two years ago I was hiring out a church hall. Um, mm. It just shows you, um, you know, with a little bit of, you know, perseverance and with passion for, for the topic and, and a desire to want to, to share it. And, 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 you know, really, I believe that meditation is a way to help people transform, but it's a way to transform the world as well. We, we've got a planet that needs taken care of. And mm. if you start with our, if you start with yourself, and then you spread it to us, you know, it's it's a solution to, to the world. Light the fire. One fire lights the next fire. And it away absolutely. We spread it. Let's make it contagious. <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you very much. Fantastic. You. That's, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Amanda. I, um, yes, you're very inspiring and, and so enthusiastic and it's just lovely to hear and it, and it just always relights fire that you know that I have when I you know listen to people that um uh, you know just um showing the way and shining their light it's just it's wonderful so thank you for for sharing all of that amazing stuff with us and thank you for uh, your ongoing support and guidance. Uh, it's it's just invaluable. Um, your lesson plans, the structure, your weekly uh, like input on Facebook as well. You know that's so helpful. It's so good to have people to check in with. It's really nice to feel like we've got a meditation family across the world who are all supporting each other, and that's that's great. Great to be a part of that. So thank you. Ah, <laughs> yeah. that's lovely. Um, so does anyone have any other questions before we, um, before we wrap it up? No, I think that's it. We'll keep it short and sweet. So that's great. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, Amanda. And thank you so much. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And thank you for all that information. It's lovely. I know there's going to be very inspired leaders once they get back in and listen to this. Hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Greg, for coming. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye.